everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the week between September 28th and October 5th, 2019. Before we even begin, I want to remind you that at the end of October, there'll be beginner and intermediate groups starting with me on a webinar format so you could study with me from wherever you want around the globe. So if you want to join one of these groups, contact me. All the details are in the postcard at the end of this video. So, what kind of times do we have in the heavens right now? As you know, this is where I talk about the celestial soup we're all swimming in, all 12 zodiac signs, and are all affected from. <clears throat> First of all, we have Saturn, Lord of Karma, visiting the south node, the dragon's tail, the south node of the moon, Opposing the North Node. What does it mean? It means that before we are to go ahead, we will need to learn from our past experience. Before actually progression can take place, there's a maturation and a taking of responsibility and a realignment that needs to happen. So many astrologers look at it as dealing with unfinished business and karma regarding things that we have sown and now are uh, 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 that we have seeded and now we are sowing or as you say the chickens are coming home to roosts to roost and as uh, you know um, we've planted those seeds so would the crops be and and um, it could be a time that good things happen in our personal lives, that we receive the stature, the recognition, and the authority that we've long been, longed for uh, uh, for a long time and that we actually deserve. But if we have digressed, this would be a time of realignment. And a lot of the time, fall, these time at least in the northern part of the globe, talks about handling melancholy. And that melancholy plays an important part. And of course, Saturn is attributed to melancholy and the south node to our emotional self. So there's some of it coming in. And that melancholy is there, again, to make us have these resolutions of realignment of pushing forward in a way that is more in accordance with consensus and with our past experience and knowledge that is more mature and responsible all Saturnian words other than that on Saturday the 28th we are having a new moon in Libra in the 5th degree 20th minute of Libra opposed by Chiron in Aries I don't know what about you, but in my social media, Greta Thunberg exploded <laughs> all over this past few days. It's like everybody is talking about, um, you know, the, the climate protest in New York and uh, her speech in the UN, and she evokes really strong emotions, either by people who just love her and get excited that finally environmental issues are getting headlines and consciousness sipping into the mass consciousness and people that think that she's a puppet of George Soros and this is all a conspiracy to divert the um, attention of people from chemtrailing nanobots that are all causing us to be transhumans and that she's really making us go into an eco-fascist global regime and let me ask you people reality check reality check are you thinking and emanating and vibrating out of fear or out of love? Out of separateness or out of unity? 
And if in your jargon, in your vocabulary, there is us and them, then you know right now where the answer lies. And it's not in love or unification. And let me tell you, we all have to understand that we are the same ocean, that we are under the same sky, that we are codependent and interconnected. And if you are acting out of fear, not out of love, you are part of the problem, my friend. Greta Kunberg, or whatever her name is, could be wrong on many occasions. She's just an autistic, 16-year-old, brave little soul. And we don't know everything about the climate. Okay? And she's human. She's allowed to make mistakes. It doesn't mean that she's not doing an amazing thing for this world and for this society. And fearing what could come if doesn't mean that uh, uh, taking the worst case scenario is one of the worst ideas we can do in life, you know, um, when you're planning our action. Like, I was sitting with a client yesterday, and, and she was telling me, you know, I, I don't know if I'll be going through another um, challenge next year. And if I'll be going through that challenge, I don't know if I'll be able to actually pull my plans through. So do you think I should actually do something? So I told her, no, I think you should take a strategy. Of course, I was cynical, you know. I told her, take the worst case scenario as if you would have a challenge that you want to go over sometimes mid next year and do nothing, you know, stay at home, do absolutely nothing. If you can, stop breathing as well. Of course, I'm cynical, that's not what I told her, you know. But I made her understand that we will need to battle the elements, whether it's blue skies or rain, we'll still have to go on our own roads. And very much the same is what I'm saying to you. You know, we're allowed to do mistakes. We're allowed to see different viewpoints. I'm just so happy this is getting wide public attention and getting all these emotions from people because, you know, it's getting into, it's sipping into the consciousness. And this is what this new moon is exactly about, the fifth degree of Libra. From the plethora of information, of opinions about the wound, Chiron in Aries, the angry wound, <laughs> the angry uh, uh, Asperger brave wound. From getting all these opinions and all these viewpoints, we are getting a more holistic understanding and information is being revealed and learned. So this is actually a beautiful thing and this is just one public depiction of how this can play out, the symbolism can play out in our lives, but it can play out in the most intimate relationships as well. It's about understanding that people feel and think differently, are hurt and, f and, and fight for different subjects, but from that plethora of information and opinions we actually grow and transcend and it's about collaboration it's about unification it's about a win-win situation that we can all adapt and and adopt i'm sorry instead of fighting against each other i don't understand how people are so antagonistic to something that is right now so positive anyway um Sunday the 29th, Venus is sextiling Jupiter and just two days later it squares a Pluto that is stationing direct. First of all, in a time of a sextile to Jupiter, both our assets, our work-related issues, our money and our relationships are subject to growth and to an, an enlargement and there's opportunities out there for expansion. 
but we need to make sure that this is a sustainable expansion, that we're not taking too much upon our shoulders, that we're not promising things that we cannot actually keep. And we can be too dramatic, too obsessive about our ideas and put too much upon our shoulders and then get into a crisis with that Pluto squaring Venus only two days later. And both of these aspects are, you know, they'll be there all week. They'll be there all week. We'll feel them all week. And um, and this is a time of transmutation and change within our relationships and within the ways that we provide ourselves with assets and money and value, within our personal uh, uh, understanding of ourselves and our bodies and our um, self-value. All of these are subject to change and tribulations and drama could be much too heightened at these times. Remember, step away from drama at these times and look at the strategic aim of things. Because if we are too dramatic or obsessive about things, we are apt to actually ruin it for ourselves and bring in unnecessary flames to our lives, to our days. So expansion, but a sustainable expansion. On an intimate level, this could be an amazing time. This could be an intensive time. This could be a time that is transformative in relationships. And transformation is a key uh, phrase, as you can see. We need to allow ourselves to dig in in order to climb out. <laughs> to understand ourselves deeper in order to free ourselves and go higher. To be thrown into the darkest pit, you know, into the uh, uh, darkest hole in order to actually rise up and be the princes of Egypt, as the biblical uh, story goes. Um, so that's it. Um, the exact square between Venus and um, Pluto is on Tuesday, and then on Thursday the 3rd, Pluto is stationing direct, starting to move forward. It's also a day that the sun is sextiling the moon. It's a good day between the male and female within you and without as well. And, um, you know, when Pluto is stationing direct, there's a stronger, more intense Plutonic atmosphere. So conspiracy, conspiracy theories and just wanting to find out what is lying underneath or hidden underneath the face of things and what is being shown to us is almost uh, uh, um, an underlying theme of these times. So a lot of things could be excavated and brought up into the surface and actually um, shown in the light at these times. We could find out a lot of things uh, uh, things can uh, um, reve be revealed on the other hand we we'll need to make sure that we're not digging in too deep unnecessarily that we're not you know cleaning this wound until we make a new wound because of it you know and knowing knowing when to stop digging is one of the wisest things we could know i had a teacher in Montreal, Canada back in 1999, her name is Dr. Marilyn Rosner. And she told me a wise sentence that she heard from someone in the past. And she told me, Boaz, you know what you should do when you realize that you are in a hole? And I told her, what, Marilyn? She said, stop digging. <laughs> she was my trans mediumship teacher back in 1999 in Montreal, Canada. Wonderful woman. Anyway, so this is a time not to dig in too deep and be too dramatic. Remember that you're here to enjoy this life. And remember we need to heal, not uh, make any further wounds and traumas. And intimately, this is a very good day. It could be a day of intimate communication as Mercury as well as moving into Scorpio. You know, only hiding everything I said. Mercury ruling ideas and words and everything verbal. And at the night time, 
we have Eastern European time, we have the Moon and Jupiter conjunct, so it's a great time to be with family and with loved ones. As I said, a very intimate time. Mars is moving into Libra the next day, Friday the 4th. So we're all fighting Mars for peace and equilibrium. Libra, we all need more harmony in our lives. And we could say that all our male energies are not as high as they usually are. We could be more peaceful and more logical. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. And on Saturday the 5th, I would like you to be less judgmental, especially evening and nighttime, and be aware of the conflict between the male and the female within you and, again, in your surroundings. And don't fall into those patterns. So, again, if you want to join one of my classes online, uh, beginner or intermediate, this is the time to contact me. And again, thank you for sharing these videos and thank you for commenting on them. May we all live long and prosper.